Hello, my name's Helen Johnston and I'll be taking Histories of Punishment. Uh, throughout the module, we'll be looking at a number of strands relating to major changes and trans transformations in punishment between about 1750 and 1914. So we're going to start the module by looking at bodily punishment and at um, banishment or transportation. So we're going to look, for example, at the public nature of um, punishments in the 18th century. And we're going to look at um, how the law really relied on public punishments and indeed punishments that were directed towards the body for maximum deterrent effect. So we're gonna look at the public spectacle of bodily punishments, um, lesser punishments like whipping, the pillory, um, but also um, major punishments like, uh, like the death penalty. Um, as I said, we're going to look at banishment or transportation. So since the 17th century, in the 17th century, we began to transport people to the, to the American colonies, largely um, uh, the uh, state of uh, colonies of Virginia at the time. Um, and then from 1718 onwards, we had a much more strict structured system through which we transported people to um, America. And it is estimated that throughout the 18th century, between about 17 1718 and 1776 that we transported about 30 to 35,000 people to the American colonies. Um, at the same time in England we were also um, bringing about more punishments um, after um, after death. So for example the Murder Act of 1752 brought in dissection and gibbeting um, and so these um, practices had existed for many centuries, but um, the Murder Act of 1752 said that the bodies of murderers should either be dissected after execution for um, medical school students or um, gibbeted, um, which is also known as hanging in change. So the body was left at a prominent site or location in relation to the case, and it was literally left there to decay, to um, remind all of the populace of um, the uh, power of uh, the law. So again, many of these punishments relate, relied on their public nature in order to convey the um, maximum deterrence to the population. Um, we also, um, after the uh, outbreak of the American War of Independence, this halted transportation of convicts to um, America. Um, and it was a few years before we then discovered Australia and as you might be more familiar with this, um, transportation to Australia began in 1788 and between then and 1868 when um, we stopped transporting people to um, Australia, it is estimated that we transported about 168,000 convicts um, to the other side of the world. So we'll examine those two types of punishments and in addition to that we're also going to look at changes in imprisonment. Um, so we're going to look at the uh, declining use of bodily punishment, the declining use of public punishment and the rise instead of the use of um, the prison um, and enclosed carceral institutions to hold um, prisoners and other um, types of offenders. So prisons again have a long history, but it is really at the end of the 18th and beginning of the 19th century that we start to conceive of prisons as being a place in which people can be reformed or altered by their experience. So you might have heard of people like John Howard and, um, and also of Elizabeth Fry. So we will look at the birth of the prison at the beginning of the 19th century. And we will also look at the changes that were brought about throughout the 19th century um, that really brought about the modern prison as we know it today. The final part of the module will then look at particular groups of offenders. So we'll look at juvenile punishments, we'll look at um, punishments towards juvenile offenders. We'll also look at women in prison and various strategies for the punishment of women and girls. And uh, we'll also look at some of the changes in punishment at the end of the 19th and beginning of the 20th century.